Growing up in Camden, I never thought much about the river that runs through our town. Other than the deep, slow-moving part known as Shark Tail, where we would swim, it wasn't of much use to me. It's hard to even track the river as it twists and turns and obscures itself under buildings, coming out different sizes and sometimes different colors as it winds its way to the harbor. But as it turns out, Before Camden was known for its brick buildings and beautiful boats, people were drawn to the area for this small but mighty stream called McGuntcook, and the whole town used to go by the same name. As soon as I joined the select board, I started having to make decisions about all kinds of things that I didn't understand. So I find I'm constantly asking questions like, what are we talking about? And why are we doing it? It didn't take long before dams came up on the agenda, and I began hearing about all the expenses that go along with them. They need to be inspected, insured, maintained, and adjusted. They cost the town hundreds of thousands of dollars, and so I got to work asking lots of questions about each one. Some of them serve the purpose of maintaining a desirable water level that is elevated for recreational purposes. But some of them, like the town-owned Montgomery Dam, where the river enters the harbor, are today basically aesthetic in their purpose. Wait, what? Since when is a concrete wall in the middle of a river considered beautiful? Okay, people like waterfalls, but it's not the kind of waterfall you see out in nature. It's more like a wildlife border wall that was built for a purpose it no longer serves. Back when water wheels were the main form of power, the dam forced water away from its natural course, which was through the Harbor Park walkway, and into the basement of the Camden Grist Mill, and later to the textile mill and anchor factory on the public landing. Ingenious and purpose-filled at the time, but today it does no such thing and instead creates a muddy bathtub that is blocking fish from accessing an entire watershed and depriving an entire ecosystem of an essential part of the food web. So while the dam itself may technically belong to the town of Camden, Camden Harbor and the McGunnacook River are gateways that connect the Atlantic Ocean to an entire region that is shared by many. Most of us recognize the importance of migratory birds, but what I didn't realize is that migratory fish are actually just as important. Every spring, the river fills with a type of fish called an alewife. Alewives, a kind of herring, are anadromous fish, which means they live in the ocean, but they migrate temporarily into fresh water to spawn. When they return inland after years at sea, They help to complete a cycle that has sustained life for thousands of years, carrying nutrients from the sea back to the land, fertilizing the soil and providing nourishment to everything from otters to ospreys. When dams are installed without fish passage, the natural cycle is broken. Not only are sea run fish prevented from traveling upstream, but species such as native brook trout, which were once abundant, can't move up and down the river as temperatures and conditions change. These fish need cold, well-oxygenated water with lots of rocky crevices to lay their eggs. When dams hold back water in impoundments, they also trap sediment that smothers the natural stream bottom that the fish depend on. Cold, rocky streams like McGuntacook are slowed down, heated up, and transformed by layers and layers of mud. McGunnacook River still has pockets of highly suitable habitat, but when fish tumble over our dams, they have no way of getting back. When fish can't spawn, they can't reproduce, and it didn't take long for the wild population to die out. But what about fish from the sea? Not being a fish expert, I started by listening to a few who promptly told me that they'd never heard of alewives trying to get past the dam in Camden Harbor. 
But soon, I read a mention of alewives in the Camden Town meeting notes from 1806. Sure enough, once I recalibrated my eyes to read 200-year-old cursive, I could see that a request had indeed been made to examine whether the dam owners could be forced to open up sluiceways to allow for the passage of alewives and other fish from the harbor to what was called the large pond above Mullinose Mills. A committee was formed and there was mention of petitioning the state legislature to compel the dam owners to comply, but it appears that nothing came of it in Camden. The first permanent settlers came to McGonagook Harbor in 1769 and got right to work leveraging the river's power by blasting bedrock, damming the flow, and molding the landscape in more ways than have been possible to properly document. The little stream that runs behind the middle school turned water wheels that powered the production of everything from flour, paper, and textiles to anchors, gravestones, and gunpowder. Yes, gunpowder right here in Camden. We don't use the river for power today, but we still need some of the dams to maintain deep water for swimming and boating, and in some places just to fill in for Mother Nature. For example, the two dams at the outlet of the lake that are now owned by the town of Camden used to be owned by the downtown mill owners who used them to regulate the amount of water that was sent downstream to their mills. In the late 1800s when there was a drought and not enough water was flowing, they went so far as to blast the outlet of the lake so they could lower it below its natural limits. Evan Fernald and others living on the lake were furious, and they were even granted an injunction by the Maine Supreme Court. Perhaps unsurprisingly, this had all taken its toll, and by the late 1800s, a state law was passed banning fishing in the entire McGuntacook watershed. One last effort to save dwindling native fish populations and even that didn't work. At that point though, they needed the river for everything from powering mills to washing sewage and sawdust out to sea. So shortly thereafter, the town seems to have given up on wild fish surviving in the lakes and streams on their own at all. A better idea was brewing nationwide. Why not bypass mother nature altogether and raise the fish in tanks and release them where we want them? The town requested a hatchery be funded by the state at the base of McGuntacook Lake, and so began the tradition that continues today. The numbers that are desirable by anglers wouldn't be as much if we didn't do our stocking. Favorite part of the job is seeing the expression on those folks' faces when they realize that the fishing all of a sudden just got way better. Stocking is a very important job. What we're doing is essentially giving Mother Nature a boost. We stock about 1.2 million fish a year. So we're creating that opportunity for folks to go out and have a real good chance of catching a fish. And that's what it's all about. From a recreational fishery standpoint, the strategy worked and fishing opportunities were greatly improved but we never have succeeded in restoring the true biodiversity of the river that has given us so much. After going to the Damascata fish ladder to look and see all of those fish going up, I came back to Camden, thought maybe I can find some and the first day I didn't find any, but the second day there were at least a hundred that I could see with my eyes, alewives trying to swim up, up to the dam. I mean, it was just the most exciting thing that, that has happened to me. We're realizing that these dams that we put in 200 years ago, because that was the only way for us to power our mills, 
The dams are still here and we've gotten attached to the way they look in some cases, but they're blocking an entire ecosystem from doing what it was originally intended to do. Now is the time to ask ourselves, what do we want Camden to be known for? We have peregrine falcons, osprey, bald eagles, and bobcats. But why do we need the state of Maine to raise our fish in hatcheries when we have dozens of miles of cold, rocky streams perfectly suited for the native populations that used to thrive here all on their own? I believe we should invest in a healthy river that attracts abundant wildlife, in a river that attracts tourists, not with a contrived concrete barricade and artificial waterfall, but a freely flowing river that tumbles over the natural ledge that exists there. What could be more beautiful than that? What could be more beautiful than the return of native fish runs and sustained wild brook trout populations to the McGonagall watershed? What if you could eat your ice cream and peer over this footbridge, not just at ducks and the occasional wayward hatchery fish, but at eagles and ospreys and thousands of native fish heading upstream to spawn? It's happening all across New England as towns, private landowners, and organizations are working to reconnect rivers and streams to the Atlantic Ocean. Fish are returning to places they haven't seen in hundreds of years, and the time is right to finish what the townspeople started here in Camden back in 1806. If there is something we need, it's a leap of faith, a step away from the comfort zone and be a little brave. So take a look around you, how far can you see? How far do you think you can run Standing on your knees It's a beautiful world out there Just don't pass on the dead If you have the will and a moment to spare It's a beautiful world out there It's a beautiful world out there It can be a bit frightening but Something you don't know Just don't pass on the dead If you have the will